all master union students actually love your course so tell us mm -hmm. how the course is structured and how is it different from any other digital marketing course being taught at other colleges everything here is practical or implementation based that's one of the things that masters union is also known for being in line with that i've created content where it's not really a lecture per se it's more of me helping them do what they've already understood teaching them a few new things the campus provides us with real budgets that we give all of the students to run their ads so they first figure out what is it that they want to run ads for most of them already have something great to work on they just didn't have the means to it this is a great testing ground for them to even understand for my own business if i launch marketing campaigns what are the benchmarks i should achieve earnings people get from running their own campaigns or building their own business plans or building out a marketing pnl for example all of that is something that they implement for their own businesses startups that they may envision to work for and that's how they have actually spent some time doing it instead of just learning it welcome to the masters union podcast Today we have with us Siddharth Padmanabhan who teaches digital and social media marketing at Masters Union. Uh, with over 15 years of experience, Siddharth has worked at marquee companies including LinkedIn and Facebook. Welcome to the Masters Union podcast Siddharth. Thanks for taking out the time. Thank you so much for having me Swati. It's a, obviously a pleasure to be able to do this. No, absolutely and you have been with us uh, since the first cohort of Masters yes. Union teaching our students digital marketing. Yes. Um so Siddharth so before we go into the details and nitty gritties of digital marketing and I would love our audience to mo know more. Um we would love to know about your journey and how you ended up specializing in digital marketing. Yeah, sure. So I think um when when I finished my graduation back in Bombay in 2009 uh one of the first things that came to me was to do a post graduation and uh, in the process of which started applying to you know all of the entrance exams available at the time uh got through a few didn't get through a few and became a personal choice of prioritization in terms of you know uh what makes more sense in terms of the investment to do an mba i had to take into account what was affordable to us at the time and at the same time where my inclinations really were so i think just as a i would say progression of a series of decisions it ended up that i started working in a sales domain so the first job i did was selling domain names and web hosting uh, back in 2009 10 at a company that was it was direct tie bigrock.com they used to sell domains and web hosting it was a time of digital transformation in india lot of retail businesses wanted to go online a uh, lot of businesses in general wanted to have at least an informational website up e-commerce hmm. hadn't really kicked in at that point in this time this was which year this was about 2009 10 hmm. uh, so there was a start of some e-commerce platforms as well around then but uh, the first step was just digital exposure so i was talking to folks who you know ran businesses or folks within companies who were tasked with hey let's get a website hmm. so that's where i first realized the power of digital to begin with uh, and then i think as a just as luck may have it i always ended up working in companies across sales and marketing roles uh, where we dealt primarily only with digital platforms hmm. helped businesses leverage digital assets in different ways post that another organization i worked was called culture machine culture machine is was a youtube multi channel network so they created a lot of content mm -hmm. and they then pushed it on to youtube to help monetize that content so the job there again for me was to this time work with businesses uh especially content production houses so think of any tv broadcast company any you know a sony or a viacom network uh have a conversation with them around the amount of content that they're already creating and pushing onto television mm -hmm. how could we take bits and pieces of that content bring it onto youtube and find a new monetization asset for that media firm so again very interesting experience there uh, youtube again was you know really scaling around the point in time i was there about 2013 14 as a result of which i really like that entire publisher ecosystem you know the ability to be a platform where brands are able to really find new audiences uh ended up in linkedin in 2016 as a part of the sales team there i was selling to enterprise audiences so there i had this entire exposure towards how do large b2b enterprise companies especially in technology saas be able to leverage digital platforms like linkedin mm -hmm. to further their sales marketing and b2b efforts 
and i think post linkedin my last corporate role was at facebook uh, where i led their independent agency ecosystem there i was helping brands as well as their agencies on using the facebook ad suite so across roles i was doing a lot of b2b selling what i was selling was core advertising itself so as a result of which i built a network of marketers over a decade or so and then decided to start my own company mm-hmm. uh, so i think after right after the first wave of covid is uh, when i started a company more just from the perspective of you know now that i've quit my corporate job i want to be able to have a source of income to begin with because of the world that i came from a lot of organic calls would come to me around hey do you know how i can do better with my campaigns or uh how do i get my website built how do i really optimize for a few things on my online marketing so just to take advantage of so many incoming queries uh, got together with an ex colleague uh, we started a small firm where we would primarily either consult for them or help them with smaller executions and i think as a result of which over time uh, you know it became a slightly larger company than we expected mm-hmm. and today I think Black Coffee Media does a lot of performance marketing. They do social media work, and they're also now building a lot of muscle in terms of bringing in more product and technology to increase the online marketing uh, efforts of any organization. And increase the ROI on your increase the ROI online marketing correct, efforts. Correct. And incidentally, I think also at the time fintech was witnessing like a revolutionary boom in India. Still continues to do so for a large aspect. So wanted to build something in the fintech space as well because as a result of my work at Facebook, I was able to see how media agencies and a lot of fintech brands were really scaling on the platform. And uh, we know that 2020 and you know 2019 were good years in terms of the kind of money that was flowing into startups. Mm-hmm. uh they still are but maybe not at the same quantum as maybe a few years ago so i was able to identify and map out that so much money is being invested into media but is it being optimally spent now mm-hmm. while working at one publisher like a facebook i can solve for maybe certain aspects of what facebook can do better for you with the money you have but looking at it just from a more holistic digital marketing perspective uh, digital marketing extends to Hundred other things beyond a Facebook ad or a Google ad as well. Mm-hmm. So that's where I realized that there are gaps, and you know, I felt like with the shift in ecosystem, with COVID coming in, and you know, changing the focus to profitability and survival in many cases for companies, the way you need to market online has changed a lot. It's not a vanity anymore; it's a necessity to stay alive. So that's where uh, we started Black Coffee previously, and then Neowise Technologies entered in the credit card challenger space. so i had the exposure to you know a level of fintech as well as digital marketing but personally i think within my role uh, i tried to stay within the sales and marketing for both companies mm-hmm. and i continue to do that you know mm-hmm. that's that's great mm-hmm. that you started with Correct. basic marketing then obviously as the industry evolved you also Absolutely. evolved with it towards Absolutely. the social media online marketing Correct. and now you are at the intersection of marketing and fintech correct uh, right so that's very fascinating so then how did you end up teaching a course on marketing <laughs> so uh, this is something i started in about 2017 with one of the leading at techs Mm-hmm. where they had an opportunity somebody had reached out to me saying that hey we need someone to come and teach uh, you know a batch on how to leverage linkedin as a platform mm-hmm. for marketers and it was literally my job at that point in time so i said yeah i can do another hour with another batch <laughs> and uh, it was a pro bono affair but i really enjoyed doing it and that's when i realized that you know while i've always done a lot of presentations throughout my career because when you're in sales you're constantly pitching but just having having to impart knowledge with a larger audience without having to expect a closure on sales etc was also enjoyable mm-hmm. so started doing more engagements and i think over the last 6 to 7 years i've trained about 15000 odd students uh, wow. across the country and uh, seen a lot of them get to you know great places as well eventually i think a lot of them have even become my clients today they send business my way uh, so you know there's a lot of synergy that it built for me also at a personal level or for my companies hmm. and uh, which is where i still find a lot of value in training not just from the perspective of giving back what i've learned but to be very candid it also helps me keep myself updated even hmm. till date because uh, things change every single month in the world of online and digital marketing so i myself have to you know keep myself uh, skilling up all of the time so hmm. these are opportunities for me to ensure that 
you know i am able to gain ground on what's new so that i'm mm. able to also share that forward yeah no absolutely and that was going to be my next question right especially in the world of marketing mm-hmm. if you see um i mean in 2000s right we were talking about billboard marketing or Correct. tv advertising Correct. and then 2010 onwards and you know 13 onwards suddenly there was this wave of social media Correct. e-commerce and everything moved online right with your smartphones coming Absolutely. in so the the marketing completely changed so somebody yep. who studied marketing you know previously uh, would not be helpful Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, right so for a marketer like you mm-hmm. who's at the cutting edge of marketing how mm-hmm. do you stay relevant i think to start with even if you were an old school marketer like you know hmm. what we call an atl marketer or someone who's worked primarily in the offline marketing world hmm. tv ads billboards it was an equally exciting world at that point in time big money is big budgets you know a lot of the world of agencies have existed for over 4 hmm. five decades now however i think for those marketers the fundamentals of marketing remain the same the medium changes and the measurability changes Hmm. so medium because everyone's moved to a smartphone device now uh, so whatever your real estate is available that's where the real attention is of us as consumers today so you will have to necessarily be on digital platforms to find new customers or you know influence customers in any way and measurability because such high amounts of money were being invested mm-hmm. marketing can often take up a majority of the cost of an organization right so in order to ensure that there is a valuable payoff against such high investments measurability became important and that's where digital marketing suddenly started seeming a lot more alluring because the results were very clear you cannot really tell if somebody looks at your ad on a billboard and is standing out you know standing under the billboard with their wallet out but instead if you place an ad on a facebook or you place an ad on you know an internet website uh there's a very high likelihood that you can track that user right down to the last mile till they finish the purchase from your website mm. so just having the insight into i'm able to invest x into digital marketing and get a very clear return a predictable return of y made it that much more exciting because you are now able to plan your business backwards mm. so especially for businesses that sell only online or businesses that are purely dependent on a digital audience no retail presence for them marketing is their sales effort everything they do in marketing driving mm. users to their you know digital platforms like their website or their app mm. is all that they need to do to sell to especially b2c and d2c segments all your e-commerce companies Absolutely. right would fall into this Absolutely. bucket whether it's amazon or flipkart Absolutely and uh, because the transactions happen online mm-hmm. in e-commerce especially the customers have to be found online mm-hmm. and the time from finding that customer to closing the transaction also reduces Uh, right so keeping all of these aspects in mind uh, you know it's important to stay up with that entire evolution hmm. and as a offline marketer i wouldn't honestly worry too much because it's just a matter of upskilling yourself hmm. the ways in which you can upskill are you know plenty. available in plenty there is everything from free content all over the internet Mm. uh and some great content there as well to mm. at least get you started get you curious about a certain topic mm. and then you can find ways and means like either a post graduation or diplomas or any kind of academic initiatives you might take to really mm. be short able courses to absolutely upskill yourself and given that again going back to the point that the fundamentals remain the same it still mm. is a customer there still mm. is a monetary transaction mm. it's just a medium of what the seller uses and mm. the measure, measurability in terms mm. of how you know we look at these spends and justify them changes but i think it's not a world so complex that it can't be figured out for an individual themselves yeah because the fundamentals of marketing remain the same right you are spending x dollar correct and you are saying i need to get a Absolutely. revenue of y on it Absolutely. now whether you do it through a tv ad or yes. a ott ad or yes. a youtube ad exactly that's just a different channel Yeah. because the so, eyeballs have moved the platform that's exactly where the role of the modern marketer is to understand which of these different channels that you mentioned are able to give me maximum bang for the buck and how do i optimize for each platform better i think that's the goal right now and i think also with you know at least the point of time we are in right now mm-hmm. with companies having such a large focus on profitability you know bottom lines are important and just 
I would say relentless growth is no longer encouraged. Uh, so given those aspects as well, it's mm-hmm. very important for a more number centric approach to come into market. Fair, fair. Yeah. Um, now, when you talk about number centric, right? Um, I just want to talk about who would enjoy being a marketer more? Is it that somebody who enjoys numbers, maths, analytics? Should I only go for marketing as my expertise if I'm that kind of person? Mm-hmm. Or do you think uh, creative people can also go into digital marketing? I think there's equal and more scope for all types of personalities hmm. in today's world of marketing. Because again, for anyone who's got an inclination towards numbers, analytics, mathematics, there is, you know, facets like performance marketing, growth marketing, marketing analytics, marketing automation, if you say have an engineering background, hmm. that are right there for the taking from a career perspective. But having said that, these are means to distribute and measure your marketing efforts, but you still need the best creatives to stand out to. You end Fair. users at the end of the day. Yeah. So the way that we maybe perceive creatives as end users is also constantly changing. Hmm. What may have been longer form content, maybe say 10 years ago, is today a 10 second reel, you yeah. know, yeah. for the audiences. So again, co- the content industry, be it creative, professionals, directors, uh, you know, they also have had to keep up. Hmm. The way in which we even say communicate to our customers is what we call the copy of an advertisement or the text on it. it, Right. Hmm. Those have also over time become shorter. Uh, Human attention spans are shorter in general. So, you know, you know that anything more than a sentence long, no one's going to bother reading it. Hmm. And especially if it's an advertisement. Yeah. So with the amount of exposure we have to devices today, banner blindness sets in. Yeah. So we're just automatically training our minds to ignore something that hmm. is placed as an advertisement. And we'll try to find the more organic content there. So unless your creative is breakthrough, you will not be able to hold that attention for that consumer. So with that, I mean, being said, even outside of creative and say analytics or marketing, there are, again, additional roles available here, right? From say, you know, being able to partner with the right kind of companies in terms of a business development. Hmm. Uh, being able to ensure that you have the right strategy in terms of your approach. So marketing today, especially digital marketing, is further broken down into multiple different types of job functions and roles. So like a small organization within the company itself. And the overlap with other functions in an organization is also very high. Correct. The overlap with product, the overlap with design, the overlap with, you know, usability. Uh, All of these aspects, again, you know, earlier a marketer's job was simply to just market. People would assume that, hey, their job is to publish our content in some organic or paid medium. And that's about it. But today it runs across the organization. So it's a very institutionalized effort. Mm. You will need support from everyone, right from the CXOs to, you know, Mm. every junior employee who's not even part of the marketing team to really propel that effort forward. Absolutely. And you mentioned about, you know, the two words that you used was growth and performance, Mm -hmm. right? And they have become uh, the main teams in most of the startups and tech companies today, right? So tell us a little bit more about growth. Uh, And this is, I think, a bigger term than just digital marketing, I would say. So tell us a little bit more and tell us about the hacks uh, growth hacks, as we call it, Correct. right? That you've Correct. seen companies use. Absolutely. So I think when it comes to growth and performance, there is so much focus uh, on these two functions today, simply because organizations are able to identify that there is a cost of acquiring a customer. That cost of acquiring a customer has to be lower than the potential lifetime value that you will receive from that customer. And has to be significantly lower. And has to be significantly lower. Now, when it comes to performance marketing, uh, the idea is to ensure that you keep a low cost of acquisition and you're able to get these customers who retain for the longest possible period of time or repeat buyers in an e-commerce scenario, you know, retention in an app scenario. Hmm. So that's where we speak about growth marketing, which is nothing but a set of intelligent and innovative measures to be able to really scale our business, whether that's from a revenue perspective, user growth perspective. The goal is how can you ensure that you're able to use concepts that are within the user base itself. So virality, for example, if you're able to use an influencer who in turn 
is able to bring his or her own audiences towards your brand mm-hmm. and at the end of the day you're able to map a positive ROI against it that could be one aspect of growth marketing mm. now, if you're able to get 1000 influencers at scale uh, with a simple barter instead of you know having a cash burn there that again could be another example of how you were able to you know widen the reach for your brand mm. at a significantly low or minimal or zero cost in addition to which growth marketing also deeply involves leveraging a lot of product and technology available today so within online marketing there's that much evolution of technology that's coming right uh, everything is not heavily dependent on the creative aspect of an advertisement so when it comes to tech how are you able to use analytical tools or you know build your own dashboards take the right decisions so again a growth marketer will work across omni channel tools will work across marketing automation platforms mm-hmm. ensure that all the 360 degree efforts from a marketing perspective are covered all of these initiatives and efforts that contribute towards user acquisition retention sales you can define in one way or the other as growth marketing understood and if i were to look at examples right mm-hmm. like one of the example when you were talking about the creative content yes. being uh, yes. able to cut through the clutter yes. i think one ad that i remember is uh, when cred partnered with rahul dravid and Absolutely. that was the talk of the town Absolutely. right so that's one way of a growth hack um tell us some more examples that you've seen um you know companies use where efficiently and Correct. by spending low amount of dollars they've been able to grow a simple growth hack is if you look at the way oneplus launched in india mm-hmm. it was a product that was available in limited stock for a waitlist yeah and simply the fact that there was so much fomo so much fomo created around the waitlist that uh, users wanted in even before they had actually felt or looked at the first version of a oneplus yeah they repeated this when they launched the oneplus 2 mm-hmm. it was a huge hit again So you know having that you can't get in kind of formula working for your audiences can always create great fomo and get mm. more people to sign up for your business similar strategies would revolve around say referrals uh mm. clubhouse did the referral system on the app where you have to you know as a user who gets in you get 3 to 6 invites which you can then use to further bring in people mm. so again for the users who are outside of clubhouse uh, initially there was a lot of fear of missing out in terms of what are they talking about on there hmm. so i need in like you know it just suddenly seemed like a very cool thing if you have a clubhouse membership correct uh so these are certain ideas but i think brands continue to innovate hmm. you can take growth marketing across to social to digital to uh you know even offline for hmm. that matter and yeah i think some of the interesting examples even globally mm-hmm. uh say around you know I can't recall the brand name but I think somebody created a fake profile on Instagram mm-hmm. uh of a character which was like I think an anime character or something of that sort and that character profile even though it wasn't an actual human being built a following built a mm. so anything that's really able to get people curious and you know we consume so much content that is breaking the monotony somewhere within that consumption that you know will really tend to stand out Hmm. over and above which just being very intelligent and not all efforts and all strategies will lead to that successful outcome hmm. but for the ones that do they will take care of the ones that don't so uh you have to be you know frugal enough to put in everything even with smaller experiments and you will find success at some point got it so yeah. anything i mean that gets people to talk about your brand whether it was in case of one plus people had the fomo of hey i'm not yep. getting in like did you get off the wait list Absolutely. or clubhouse hey are you part of it because i'm not Correct. yet or do you have the invite Correct. can i get that right i think that gets people talking and that brings us to the point of being viral right yeah. every company today is saying how do i create a content uh, that yeah. becomes viral organically yeah. because that will give me the roi on my dollars correct so what are some of the thumb rules uh, that one can follow uh, when you know when we are making the content to ensure that high probability of getting viral i'll start by throwing out the disclaimer again that it's not as easy to go viral as it may have been 5 or say 10 years ago hmm. when you know let's say influencers twitter is one of the first platforms where influencers were born mm. um 
so was snap they came to platforms like facebook or instagram a lot later you know where mm-hmm. they also scaled but when you want to build ideas that have the potential to go viral it's not as easy as saying that hey because i want to save cost as an organization on you know paid channels of marketing we need a viral mm-hmm. idea not everything has the potential to go viral a uh, lot of creative thinking obviously is required but it's a medium the message hmm. like you know how do you really go about it uh, there could be instances where a brand even goes back to newspaper advertising and does something extremely interesting on a cover page or you know takes over the cover page in some humorous way or send something across which could also possibly be a great campaign or you touch a chord hmm. that's one of the easier ways to do it is you're able to touch an emotional chord or a funny bone with your end users Uh, mm-hmm. one of the ads i can recollect is if you recall the recent uh, re-rendition of the cadbury advertisement mm-hmm. where the 90s version of the advertisement had a male batsman uh, you know about to hit a six and his yeah. girlfriend or partner was in the audience yeah. and the re-rendition of that was that it was a women cricketer women yeah. batsman who was able to then you know and her boyfriend comes running down onto Great. the ground with that cadbury Yeah. Uh, so again it was a moment in time where they were able to recreate something they themselves had now hmm. this is again a very executable idea for a brand with as much legacy mm-hmm. uh, as a cadbury but i think even for newer age brands there's you know interesting things that can be done from a viral marketing perspective uh, we had a wave of crypto and nft related ideas last year mm-hmm. where brands would drop you know their uh, nfts collectibles where again creating fomo with customers that hey have you gotten in on this rage yet it doesn't always necessarily have to add too much serious buying value to the customer it could just be striking a chord emotionally or doing something disruptive from a creative perspective that can really find you a new audience that gets gets the customer talking that gets the customer right it talking. could be anything i remembered recently yeah. when bonvita came up with a campaign Correct. where they tweaked the shape of the box yeah. uh yeah. saying don't force your child to be what you want them to be Absolutely. make them uh, you know like pursue their own careers Absolutely. and own choices So yeah. I think it's all about making that statement and striking that emotional chord. Absolutely. Uh, well said, Siddharth. So you mentor a lot of students, right? Even mm-hmm. at Masters Union mm-hmm. or beyond. Tell us one or two stories where, uh, when you gave them the guidance, right, saying, "Hey, this is what you're doing wrong. Try mm-hmm. it this way." And I'm sure, like a lot of students have come up and said, "Hey, Siddharth told us to do this, and this has resulted in 10x returns." Yeah. So for our audience, just tell us what is that one or two mistakes that you know young people do uh which you have over time asked them to fix i think especially as you're starting out uh let's say you're running ads or you're building a marketing plan hmm. or you're planning a social media calendar uh when you start executing these ideas that you have and you start you know going towards the objectives let's say you're running ads or you're managing a social media page I think one of the classic mistakes I see is uh, analyzing yourself and your results too often too early. Mm-hmm. Uh you have to understand that while you've created great content and you've kind of figured out who your target audience is, you still are dependent on a third party platform to disseminate that message to them. That could be a website like, you know, Harvard Business Review or it could be a Google ad. Hmm. Now these platforms are tech stacks that are built by somebody else. so you cannot fully control the experience and the rate at which these ads will go out you cannot control the virality algorithms that people talk about mm-hmm. so you may have a question in the sense that hey i've built great content but i only get 10 likes to my post whereas on a youtube i get 100 likes so again there is no one truthful source to all of this it's a lot of testing and learning you set your own benchmarks as you go along So one of the I mean first lessons I would give everyone is don't panic too much and don't go and check your results every single day. Hmm. Uh any data needs time to populate and enough data needs to populate for it to be statistically Even significant. Even the Facebook so, algorithms take time absolutely. to kind of fix themselves, right? Like yeah. reiterate and then yeah. figure and out I what's I working. I personally think they're like a mystery box sometimes <laughs> even for very experienced marketers. Yeah. Uh and there may not be a rationale for something. Hmm. Not every change has to lead to a positive outcome. Hmm. uh even though the intent may have been very positive and not every action may lead to an outcome at all hmm. so you obviously look at data over longer periods of time 
A-B test a lot and set your own benchmarks as a business. That I'm able to achieve a click-through rate of X and I'm able to drive a ROAS of Y hmm. in month one. How do I maybe increase myself 10% month on month? So, you know, grow against yourself initially. And of course, there will always be industry benchmarks. There'll be some competitor rankings that you will try to achieve. Mm -hmm. But I think as we ourselves run ads for the first time, especially, or, you know, run anything on marketing or it's a sales effort, growth will take time because there are learnings that those systems need to build. Uh, who are the audiences? Which audiences are most likely to respond to your advertisement? So these are aspects that only a little time and patience will allow you to collect that information. Mm -hmm. So before that learning phase has been completed, uh, don't panic too much and don't make too many changes. That's, that's Fair. Have some patience. Have some patience. Because these exactly. things take time. Yeah. Got it. And I'm sure you're also capturing these learnings in your course, uh, yeah. which is, uh, you know, all Master Union students actually love your course and I've heard them talk about it Thank so you. much. Um, so tell us mm -hmm. how the course is structured and how is it different from any other digital marketing course being taught at other colleges? I'll take the second question first in terms of how it's different. I think it's the teaching pedagogy that differs uh, from the perspective that Everything here is practical or implementation based. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that Masters Union is also known for. And with being in line with that, I've created content where it's not really a lecture per se. It's more of me helping them do what they've already understood, teaching them a few new things and then sending them to, you know, figure it out. Mm. So the campus provides us with real budgets that we give all of the students. So mm. for example, to run, the campaigns. to run their ads or campaigns. Mm -hmm. So they first figure out what is it that they want to run ads for. Any business. Any they business. Have to figure out a business. There's a lot of startups building within the classroom. There's mm. folks who come from, you know, different companies and they already are working on some ideas and prototypes. Most of them already have something great to, you know, work on. They just didn't have the means to it. So this is a great testing ground for them to even understand for my own business, for my own brand. Mm. If I launch marketing campaigns, what are the benchmarks I should achieve? Hmm. Uh, in the process of running these, you will learn everything. If you, if you run it by yourself, you learn everything from how good or bad Facebook and Google chat support are in resolving your queries to even maybe how easy it is to drive 10 X ROAS of business within one month of running ads. Hmm. So at least a basic level of exposure is given to them practically, uh, over and above this, I think it's a fairly, you know, intelligent class that comes into the batch again. So even for me, it's a very, uh, I would say enriching experience in terms of having these conversations with them and helping them learn. Because I know that a lot of what I teach will literally be implemented once I leave the classroom. Yeah. So that's again, you know, it drives me also personally to come back the next day and teach them in more depth. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the same time, the kind of questions we get in the classroom and the kind of learnings people get from running their own campaigns or building their own, say, business plans or building out a marketing PNL, for example. Hmm. All of that is something that they implement for themselves, for their own businesses or, you know, startups that they may envision to work for. And that's how they're really able to put it all together. OK, this is how it's done. So structurally, hmm. they've actually spent some time doing it instead of just learning it. And versus any other, I would say, typical ed tech growth course or performance marketing course where you learn more and do less. Mm -hmm. And also because of the nature of, you know, uh, I would say most ed techs that I've been familiar with more recently and taught at some tend to have extremely large classrooms and mm. they're virtual. So while, you know, virtual makes things a lot easier and accessible, it also takes away a lot of personalization and contextualization, yeah, a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching that could happen. So I think those are some of the benefits here. And I'm um, sure students walk up to you even after the class to talk one-on-one. -on -one on uh, yeah, yeah, and sometimes they walk up to me when I'm in the middle of a sentence and I'm teaching the class. So they're very inquisitive. <laughs> huh. And uh, it's, it's great to have that, honestly speaking, because, you know, you want the kind of folks huh. who won't even let you move on with your content unless their doubts are resolved. Yeah. So, and the beauty about it is this is not the classroom learning doubts that typically come in that, Hey, you explained the concept. I have a question around it. Let's move on. This is more in the terms of, Hey, you explained the concept. There's a business idea I'm working on. How would you apply this use case here? Hmm. So they're they able to learn from a very hands-on perspective. I think that's the 
And and is it true that the grade in your class depends on the performance of the marketing campaign? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> the grades in my class uh, again depend on you know uh, how they've been able to implement, huh. and not just what they've been able to learn. While there is hmm. due credit given to what they're able to learn, retain, absorb, hmm. but that's what all of the traditional teaching methods always gave us. So yeah. here the focus is on what you've been able to implement and you know complete uh, and. How are you really building a thought process around everything that you learn? That's what we're really trying yeah. to gauge here. And that is what is going to happen in the real world Absolutely. too, right? Like tomorrow Absolutely. when they go and when they run their own startup or they do a job, the company is going to judge them on the performance Absolutely. of the campaign and Absolutely. the revenue it brings. Not theoretically, Not what, theoretically you, what you know. What you're so, gonna, I right. mean, this is one of the things that I've also learned while building my own startup that, and this is through a series of maybe more failures than successes. Mm -hmm. But uh, we end up, I mean, I would say if you're not going to be practically implementing things yourself, whether you're at a corporate or you're at a startup or any, you know, you're running something just by yourself, unless you're able to get hands on with things and understand it, even hiring teams or external partners yeah. is never going to help. And given that online marketing, digital marketing today is probably one of the biggest sources of revenue for most organizations. You can't escape it. You can't escape it. Uh, yeah. You know, certain, I mean, whether it's B2B SaaS or it's e-commerce or it's hyper-local delivery. Yeah. Audiences will continue to be found and nurtured online. So, because it's something that we have to do, we rather do it well with, you know, actual knowledge of how to do it. Yeah. Uh, not just what to do. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. No, thank you for that conversation and a lot of yeah. input, Siddharth. My one last question. Mm -hmm. What is your advice mm -hmm. to our young students or mm -hmm. professionals who are thinking of building a career in digital Correct. marketing? Correct. One of the, I would say, reservations that I hear from a lot of young students who are looking to enter digital marketing is that, hey, isn't it too crowded already? <laughs> Aren't there so many digital marketers around? Yeah. They may tend to feel that way because there is so much more content available. And, you know, uh, one of the things is there are so many digital marketers around because it's a great career prospect. Mm -hmm. Digital marketing doesn't just mean running ads or making creatives or, you know, bringing things online. That's not what it means anymore. It literally means sales, revenue and bottom line for an Growing organization. Growing your business You're online. Growing your business, literally. So, yeah, uh, it's very close to the role that a CXO or a CEO is responsible yeah. to do. So there is always a massive amount of scope and given at the rate at which technology is rapidly evolving and the kind mm. of tools and, you know, resources are available to us today, there are more than enough aspects of digital marketing where you can even specialize or mm. you can choose to be a generalist. Mm -hmm. So never a bad time to enter. Uh, if you just look at the kind of growth rates in India and globally mm. for the kind of money brands are investing into Online marketing, it's continues to remain at an all time high, regardless of global affairs and, you know, anything yeah. of that sort. So it's very resilient as a career path in many ways. And I think that's where I would take a lot of, you know, comfort uh, in ensuring that I take a step, take the right steps towards entering digital marketing. There is a plethora of content available online, like we spoke earlier. So I would have them start there. And then once you're ready with all your fundamentals, that's when you can look at further upskilling yourselves either within a niche or as a generalist with a few courses. And of course, jobs are free. I mean, plentifully available when it comes to the digital marketing, product marketing, uh, just growth as a domain in general. So my advice would definitely be to go for it and not yeah. have any reservations around macroeconomics or you know uh, competition and things like that no this is one of the most high yeah. in demand Absolutely. career prospect uh, today right anything else you would want to say Siddharth no I think just to your last point uh, you know when you speak about high demand career prospects we joke sometimes that within our own company that getting performance marketers is maybe as or more difficult as finding you know engineers in a Bangalore startup community so uh, it is a rare skill set and which is where there is yeah. a need for so many more people to come and learn and execute yeah. more performance and growth marketing. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking Most time welcome. out. Thanks uh, a lot. Yep. Thank you.